Chandu, the magician. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The makers of White King Soap present for your enjoyment, Chandu, the magician. Would you like to make magic your hobby? Want to do magic tricks just like Chandu? Then send today for Chandu's first magic trick offer. Chandu calls it the Assyrian money changer. It changes pennies into dimes right before your eyes. And you can have this trick for your very own by sending 25 cents and a White King box top to Chandu, Los Angeles 21. Listen. You take a penny from your pocket or handbag and lay it on the table. Then cover the penny with the mystic ruby block. Now remove the block while everyone watches closely. And behold, in place of the penny, there's a silver dime. Begin your collection of Chandu's magic tricks with this thrilling Assyrian money changer. Just send 25 cents in coin and the top from a box of White King soap to this address. Chandu, Los Angeles 21, California. Chandu will send you his Assyrian money changer postpaid, complete with instructions. Send for Chandu's Assyrian money changer tonight. Frank Chandler, known in the Far East as Chandu the Magician, is in an isolated mountainous Balkan country, ostensibly attached to the American consulate, but in reality, on a secret mission for an international committee known as the Inner Council. With him are Dorothy, Betty, and Bob Regent. Meanwhile, Dorothy's husband, a world-famous scientist, is in Paris, where at the urging of the council, he is working to perfect a secret invention. At a reception given by Carter Mason, the American consul, Chandler and the regents meet Nicholas, who had been the crown prince before the recent change in the government forced his father to abdicate. And Chandler recognizes Nicholas as the young man whose life he had saved by his occult powers in Tibet. A few moments later, alone with Chandler, Betty tells him Jan Metzos, the foreign minister, is the man she had seen prowling about their castle in the dead of night. Chandu, the magician. He can't be the man. He is too, Uncle Frank. He wasn't three feet away from me that night. You were frightened and the room was dark except for the candle the man carried. You couldn't have seen him too plainly. Yes, I did. I'd know him anywhere. Now think, dear. You climbed into that big chest when you heard someone on the tower stairs. But I held the lid of the chest up a little so I could breathe. Why don't you believe me, Uncle Frank? I didn't say I don't believe you. But in the first place, why should the foreign minister be in that attic and... I know it sounds silly, but I saw him. And in the second place, look at him. Jan Metzos has only one arm. Why, that's right, he has. Surely you'd have noticed that if the man... Oh, dear. Now I'm all mixed up. You're just mistaken, dear. I remember he had the candle in one hand, and he closed the tower door with the other one. Uncle Frank, maybe they're twins. Maybe. You don't think so. You're thinking I'm making the whole thing up. I'll look into it, honey, I promise you. So why don't you just enjoy the party and leave it to me, hmm? Well, my mother, I didn't see you. You and Uncle Frank had your heads together like conspirators. (laughs) Uh, Betty, uh, this is... Prince Dimitri, Nicholas's friend. Oh, how do you do? I am enchanted, Miss Regent. Uh, my brother, Frank Chandler, Your Highness. How do you do? Uh, Mr. Chandler, this is a great pleasure. Your sister tells me you are attached to the American consulate here. Yes. Has America suddenly become interested in the affairs of this small country that she sends a man of your prestige here? My prestige is greatly overrated, Your Highness. You are much too modest. Uh, Miss Regent. Would you care to dance? Oh, yes. Thank you. I understand you are from California. You must tell me all about it. Frank, I hate to have that man dance with Betty. Why not? Well, 
Well, there's something about him. I noticed it the moment Nicholas introduced him. I don't like him. All right. He's much too interested in what I'm doing here. I'd like to know why he's here. With all the fuss they make about admitting foreigners. Nicholas invited him. He says it's only for a week or so until the Paris newspapers get tired of running sensational stories about Dimitri. Oh, I've been hearing about them from Madame Valuchek. She's honestly afraid of having Dimitri here. But why? Did you hear about the girl who went to a dance with Dimitri in Paris and died mysteriously the next day? Yes, Don. And about the boy whose horse threw him and killed him while he was riding with Dimitri in the Bois. It could have been an accident. Yes, but was it? And even that's not all. They say a Polish friend invited Dimitri to his apartment and a servant found him dead in the morning for no apparent reason. I know, Dot, but we can't refuse. There is something dreadful about that man. It's not just my imagination. Dot, we can't refuse to see Dimitri. He's Nicholas Guest. Oh, I know, Frank, but it... I can't come out openly against him, even if he's here to work against me, which I'm pretty sure he is. On the surface, it's none of my business. But then... The government doesn't want any trouble. Its hands are full enough now. But, Frank... The foreign minister must have approved Dimitri, or he wouldn't be here. Oh, I don't care anything about the fine shades of Balkan politics. I just don't want that man anywhere near Betty. Frank, where are they? Oh, there they are. Just going out on the balcony. We'll um, walk over that way. Well, Bob's certainly enjoying himself. You know, Mason's daughter's a very pretty girl. Oh, I don't see how the Masons stand it. This atmosphere of intrigue and suspicion. And they've been here for years. Well, it hasn't always been as bad as it is now. No, we can go out this way. Why? They're not out here. They've gone into the garden. Not very far away. Dot, listen. Oh, it can't be that... That summons not here. It is, though. Come over here, farther from the house. I am listening, my teacher. I don't hear it now. Well, there's something wrong. Well, can it be my fault? Shall I go back inside? No, no, it's not your fault this time, Dot. Oh, there it is. Frank, what do you suppose... Could... I know. There's a powerful influence working against me. Listen a moment. <laughs> that is very amusing, Miss Regent. <laughs> oh, it's no use, Dot. Is that you, Mr. Chandler? Ah, Mrs. Regent. Surely you were not concerned about my showing your daughter this delightful garden. Why, Mother, we've only been out here a minute. I know, dear. And we came to get you because we're going now. Oh, no, I'm having such fun. If you would like to leave Miss Regent in my care, I will be most happy to bring her home safely. Thanks, but she'd better come with us. Is Bob going to stay? No, Betty. Come along. We'll say goodbye to Mr. Mason. Good night, Your Highness. Good night, Mrs. Regent. I'm enchanted to have met you at last. All of you. And I sure had fun. That Prince Dimitri's quite a guy, you know that? Oh, Bob. He's going to take me riding up in the mountains. He's going to lend me a horse and we're going to Oh, no, he's not. Well, Mom, why not? Dimitri surely didn't bring his horses here when he's only staying a week. What do you mean a week? He's all set to stay a long time. Is he really, Bob? Sure. Oh, won't that be terrific? It certainly won't. For Pete's sake. What's the matter, Mom? Listen, Bob, and you too, Betty. I want you to promise that you won't go anywhere with Dimitri alone. Well, why? What's wrong with him? You don't know him, do you, Uncle Frank? I'm beginning to think I do. Come on, I'll help you out. I'm sorry if I've spoiled the party for you, Betty. But until Uncle Frank finds out more about him, I don't want you to see Dimitri again. But I told him I'd go riding with him. Hey, you're not all ignited about that stuff in Paris, are you? You mean he told you that? Well, sure, why not? It was just a bunch of bad breaks. Perhaps. The point is, Dimitri's supposed to be so cut up about it, he can't bear to have it mentioned. Well, but Uncle Frank... Oh, Betty, let's not talk about it tonight. You and Bob go up to bed, will you? Well... All right. You didn't spoil the party, Mother. It was wonderful. And wasn't it marvelous that I had on a dress from Paris? Good night. 
Good night, night, night dear. Good night, Bob. Listen, Bets, you know what we can do tomorrow? We can walk the attic and see if there Now, Dot, I'll get the crystal and we'll see him. It's on the table there. Maybe you'd rather not see this. Why? Yes, I'm going to look. Whatever it is, I want to know. Then sit here, then. If I'm right, well... By the power of the three times three, I will look upon the face of Dimitri at this moment. There he is, standing in the shadows. An underground room, an altar. Frank, like the Temple of Black Magic we saw. Yes, but it's worse than... Wait. Spirit of Mulga, master of the Black Hearts, Remember. What does he mean? I hate to tell you, Dot. It's an ancient incantation of evil. Oh, he looks like Satan himself. His eyes in that white face. Spirit of eternal night, remember thy servant. Listen, we have to hear this. Evil eye, evil mouth, the words that bring madness and death. I call upon each of you. I call upon all of you. Sin. Your black forces into this house. This house? Spirit of Nantar, most cruel of all demons, remember. Visit your black powers upon the house of Chandu. The alchemist of old spent his lifetime trying to change base metals into silver and gold. But now Chandu will teach you this secret of the ages. With his mystifying Assyrian money changer, you can change pennies into dimes. Chandu will send you this magic trick for just 25 cents and the White King box top. Listen, place a penny on a table. Cover the coin with the mystic ruby block the magic money-changing block. Utter the magic word, so coot. Then remove the block, and in place of the penny, there is a silver dime. You boys and girls will want to start your magic collection with this Assyrian money-changer. Here's a fine pocket trick for you men to spring on your friends and business associates. And if you ladies want to be sure your guests have a good time at your next party... Try entertaining them with Chandu's magic trick. Just send 25 cents in coin and a box top from White King Soap to Chandu, Los Angeles 21, California. That's Chandu, Los Angeles 21. Make magic your hobby. Make White King your wash day soap. You'll love White King. Chandu the Magician is produced and directed by Cyril Armbrister. The makers of White King invite you to listen tomorrow at this time when the story resumes. Chandu the Magician. You who listen regularly to Chandu the Magician will be interested in reading a story on page 20 of the November issue of Radio Mirror Magazine, now on the newsstands. The story is about Tom Collins, who plays Chandu. And there is a picture of Tom in his role as the modern miracle worker. It's an intimate glimpse of one of your radio favorites. And you can read it in the November Radio Mirror, now available at your newsstand. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.